Article 5 of the Constitution states that two-thirds of Congress, or two-thirds of the states, can call co for a convention of the states to propose an amendment to the Constitution. This resolution represents Alaska's call for a convention to address congressional term limits and calls upon the states to do so as well. Currently, there are six states that have passed resolutions. These states are Florida, Alabama, Missouri, West Virginia, Oklahoma, and Wisconsin. So a convention of the states is a convention called to specifically propose amendments to the Constitution and differs from a constitutional convention, which typically implies a drafting of an entirely new Constitution. If a convention were to be held, then three-fourths of the states would need to ratify the amendment to become part of the U.S. Constitution. It is important to note that the convention would be held solely for the purpose of an amendment on federal term limits and not the Constitution as a whole. We have why do we need term limits? So incumbents in the U.S. Congress typically raise five times more money than their challengers and an approximately 95% re-election re rate. Incumbents having a high success rate often results in uncompetitive races and deters serious challengers. Newcomers in races tend to lack established support bases, name recognition, and the finances needed to take on an incumbent. Introducing new members from diverse backgrounds into Congress is essential for bringing fresh perspectives and innovative approaches, approaches to governance. For instance, teachers could bring their practical insights and experiences from the classroom into education policy, or doctors who could bring valuable knowledge on the way the healthcare services are designed, funded, and executed based on their experiences in the medical field. Under the current system, it can take 20 years in, in office to even get close to a committee chair, which is more disfranchising for everyday Americans who would like to get involved in public service. Term limits would give more people with real world experience the chance to serve and make an impact in their country. So up until the 31st president, Previous presidents had voluntarily stepped down after serving two terms due to the precedent set by George Washington. It wasn't until Franklin D. Roosevelt's fourth term loomed that a handful of states passed res resolutions for presidential term limits. So although two-thirds of the states did not pass resolutions for a convention, state pressure helped push Congress to act. In March 21, 1947, Congress proposed a resolution calling for a presidential term limit of two years, which was then sent to the states for ratification and ratified on February 27, 1951, when Minnesota became the 36th state to approve the proposed constitutional amendment. The founders included Article 5 because they understood that Congress would be unwilling to give attention to the issues faced by the people particularly if those issues involve restrictions on the federal government's own power. So this is a poll that was conducted by RMG Research on Alaskans this month, um, shows that 84% of Alaskans are in favor of an amendment for term limits on members of Congress. So by looking at the poll, we can see that support for federal term limits is highly favored across all demographic and political groups. On the left-hand side, we can see that 84% are in favor, and we can see 60% strongly approving and 3% strongly disapproving. So to close, term limits would encourage an influx of fresh talent and ideas reflecting the diverse and changing demographics of the American populace. It would promote more diversity of ideas ensure regular renewal of leadership, and would, and would help maintain a government that is more aligned with the needs and wishes of its citizens. This change is not just about preserving our consolidation of power, but about preserving the vibrancy and effectiveness of our democratic system. <laughs>